Hey guys, welcome to the Third Planet from the Black Hole review of Cyberpunk 2077. This is our first video that we're doing to relaunch the website and the YouTube channel, so I hope you guys like it. Today I'm joined by Joseph Thomas and we are talking about the most okay game of 2020. Like it, it was a perfect ending to 2020 that Cyberpunk was just the sometimes beautiful yet sometimes av the most average looking new game I've ever played. <laughs> I it was just I So okay, first off to start this with yeah. in case anybody doesn't know, um I haven't been gaming that much in my for a long time and uh I recently got an Xbox One, and this was my first next-gen game, and I thought that this was going to be, like, you know, amazing, going to blow up, blow my mind and everything. And it was just... It just reminded me of why I stopped playing video games so much. I don't, I, like, I don't consider myself, like, the biggest gamer either, but I do play the new releases mostly. And obviously, this was one of those games that... I have been having built up for me constantly the past two years, especially. And I, I would say I was like really hyped going into it. And, to, and but after about one full day of playing it, I went, okay, uh, we got issues here. And <laughs> yeah, I um like first like, not, off, yeah. no, go, go ahead. I like, and I'm not even talking, I'm not even talking about the bro how broken this fucking game is uh yeah <laughs> was, i'm just we'll, talking we'll, i'm just talking about the amount of content that's clearly lacking that's yeah well we'll we'll get to all that i think um first let's uh let's let's go into the, like the hype end of the game so yeah. i first heard about this in i i think it got announced in 2012 when did that trailer come out with the the first teaser trailer with the girl who had like the big razors coming out of her arms and and everything yeah. and the police I feel, like, I feel like it was 2012 2013 i believe so yeah like so, so it's been about it's been about seven eight years helping. yeah so this has been in hype for a long time i've i was looking forward to it like not to the level i was looking forward to something like red dead redemption 2 that's just because i'm a huge like red dead fan but i was right. looking forward to it like enough where i was like i f i would follow the um the development of the game and you know i wanted uh to you know to see more of it and you know i was i was pretty hyped to play it you know but i wasn't like insanely hyped for it like some people were see what yeah I, I didn't come around to really gravitating towards this game and paying attention to its development until about 2018, maybe 2017. 2017 is probably where I first heard about it, but 2018, yeah. I really started paying attention. And can't lie to you, I mean, what we saw looked truly like next level, so like some next level game hanging. I just couldn't help but get swept up in the excitement about it. Right. What really got me uh, going with the game was when they first showed the gameplay of like you driving around Night City and like it was really colorful and everything. We had never seen a, you know, we've had a lot of cyberpunk games before. We've never seen anything like this. So like yeah. GTA with a cyberpunk setting was like something that, you know, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. It's like if you, if, if you enjoy any Blade Runner esque type stuff, then like this is like a, you maybe, that's. This was a, honestly was a dream. <laughs> yeah, That's and what you, it felt like. <laughs> and uh, you know, the more I looked into like the backstory, like how you know the it was started out as a tabletop game, and now the developer is, or the creator of the tabletop game, like he had a, a lot of influence in this game and everything. So I was like, this is gonna be really good. And then of course, Keanu Reeves. You don't say. Yeah, and just like, as I, like as like like release really date. Uh, seemingly got closer and closer. I mean, of course, we had to deal with multiple delays and whatever. Right. But uh, as I as as the development continued, like you just saw the amount of detail they put yes. into this game. Like it see it, it seemed like it was destined to be successful because like I I'd never seen so so like a company just no go so far to just. Get so much in a game, and so like I, 
I, I, I thought I didn't think there was any chance this game was going to turn out the way it did. <laughs> right, and um, you know I'm okay with uh, um, delaying a game. Like I don't understand like video game fanboys. Like that's something that I never understood about the community who complain about a game getting delayed. I'm like that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, to me that shows that the developers are taking their time. They really want to get this right. And I'm always just like, the more a game gets delayed, the better I expect it to be. Yeah, for sure. I mean, unless you're Duke Nukem like 3D or whatever that was, the game that got delayed for like 20 years or something. Yeah. And it ended up sucking. It's like, yeah, and I mean, a game can keep getting de- delayed. And there could be exceptions with the development team. It's just completely, it's just completely. Things are, if things don't completely off the rails, then there's nothing you can do to salvage the game. No clue, but with no a company like this that had a good reputation after Game Witcher on. Three, right? Yeah, that's I never played Witcher, but I've heard like a lot of great Fans things about the, those games. Yeah, I have. So I've, so I've, already, I've played it a little bit. I've not played the entire game, but like, yeah, just based on what I've heard about the game, I had high expectations with them going the route of making another open world so game, but now. In a futuristic my universe, down, so I'm like, and I, need to radio I was like, okay, <laughs> like let's go, yeah. And then launch day happened. Yeah, when launch day finally came after three to four delays, it was a fun. People were excited for about one day. <laughs> yeah, I um, like I said, my first like current gen. Kind of, well, I guess it's like last gen now because we got the xbox series x and everything like right and everything up so you know as i was playing it i I went in with like kind of lowered expectations because i started hearing complaints and i was like okay well it can't be that bad they're not gonna release and i'm fully aware of like this trend that has uh that has become com- more common than it should be in the uh, PS4, Xbox One era of releasing games that aren't finished yet so, so they could patch them later. Yeah. I didn't realize how bad it could be <laughs> until no, I played Cyberpunk. No, when I when I heard the game was suffering from bugs and all that, I'm like, yeah, that's honestly, that's nothing new to this generation. It's pretty common. Yeah. Um, but, man. <laughs> oh, like, there, this, this, this game this game is so far more broken than just a couple bugs and glitches just the game doesn't work you were literally getting about um where you have to escape from the uh i wanted to call it nakatomi plaza what was the the big corporation you're fighting against in this game um tacoma is it, or Arisa- is it arisaka arisaka yeah the yeah. arisaka corporation yes um, Nakatomi Plaza. Um, so it was a mission where you're trying to escape the, the apartment or the, the, the corporate building and you have to kill a guard to open up the elevator to get downstairs because the elevator's locked. So you have to kill the guard, take a key off of him and get in the elevator. The only problem is the guard that I was supposed to kill spawned in the elevator that was locked that I was trying to get into. Yeah. So I had to... I had to start the mission over. So it's like those kind of game breaking bugs are there on top of all the other little bugs that are going on. This Yeah, just as a point of reference, you played yours on a Xbox One X, correct? Yes. Okay. I heard I, PS I heard the base PS4 got it the worst. Yeah, base PS4 got the worst. I, I was like I was lucky enough to at least have the PS5 to play it on. Right. So my game was salvageable. It I, I I of course experienced a few crashes. It didn't happen. That, it didn't happen all that often, but the bugs were still there. And so, like, I had, like, within the first mission, you have I had Jackie walking through the elevator doors before the elevator opens. I had yes. Him walk, I had him walking into like these shelves that just all of a sudden started exploding because he was walking through them. Like, I was just like, <laughs> and. It, it, it and I had I even had situations where I the, like just the menus weren't weren't working. Like I would go and adjust the graph, uh, go to the options and then adjust the uh, graphic settings, and then the game would not let me unpause the game. <laughs> Man, so I had to restart everything. 
<laughs> so yeah, like this game had a very very rough launch, and it was just <sighs> the amount of pat like I it needed to be delayed again. It really did. Oh, well, not, but it's like yeah, one hundred percent to yeah. fix the bugs. To fix the it's like it's more more so it's like awesome, probably more than just fixing the game. Right. Because I felt like because I felt I felt like they really. They really shortchanged this worry, game, right? Because there's clearly a lot of content that was taken out. Right, and that brings me to the next point, which is the gameplay. Because I think the the glitches in this game overshadow that the game itself has some issues that a lot of people aren't talking about too much. Yeah, and you know, gameplay wise, I hate the shooting system in this game. I despise the shooting system. So much. What, what is exactly that bothered you about it? It just makes everything such a pain in the ass where it goes from, I love a challenging game and I, I hate a frustrating game. And it yeah. brings the game from challenging to frustrating. And one of those things is just that, for example, if you run over, if you're running low on ammo for like a, an assault rifle, yeah, and you run over to another assault rifle that's laying on the ground, you can't just run over and pick up the ammo. Yeah. And add it to the one you have. You actually pick up that assault rifle. So you have to go back in and switch the gun in your your weapons wheel if you run out of ammo in the other one. And it's just such, it kills the flow of the game. Oh yeah, speaking of, like, speaking of picking up weapons, God, the inventory system is a f absolute mess. Oh, it's such a like, pain in the ass. Like, they might because like like you said when you pick up all these weapons you'll pick up different ver different varies of the exact same weapon that just have slight differences so it just fills up your inventory like to, to so so then you just have this wall of options that you and you have no idea what these guns are because so many of them are just copies with like one slight variation and the next exactly thing you know, and the next thing you know the game is saying oh you have too much stuff and you you're, you're too heavy so you just gotta start dropping stuff and there's no organization to it. It's no. it's, been, it's just an absolute mess. And that so that's why I found it really hard to like try to find the weapons I wanted because I would, they would just get lost. Right. And then another thing you do because you're so overwhelmed, you might end up accidentally. Because what I would do is I would pick up weapons to sell them after the mission to get more money. Yeah. The thing is though is because the game's not very good at differentiating a lot of this. And you have so many weapons, you might end up selling. The, accidentally selling the custom weapon that you had that you customized right and everything and you crafted to make it more powerful so i'm just like shit i sold my weapon and now i'm stuck with these crappy guns that i wanted to sell so yeah. it was yeah i wasn't a big fan of the shooting mechanics in this game and some game like some it's very inconsistent because like some weapons are way too op some are like way too underpowered and it's just yeah. Yeah, I like I, so I like the feel. So I enjoyed the feel of the weapons. I thought they had. I thought I liked their power. That I felt. That I felt with them. Yeah. But again, one of my pet peeves that a lot of games do now is I cannot stand bullet sponge and en en enemies. Uh -huh. games, games like games like the division, for one, is probably my the worst example of this. I, I don't I, I was like I don't I don't like I just don't I don't like the the, the game style when I'm having to shoot. The, just, just oh, unload an entire clip into one enemy, and you see the num, you see like the point numbers coming out and all that. Exactly. Like, I, I, I hate that style of gameplay. And, and the biggest issue, like biggest, biggest issue with this game is, go, that I've, I've noticed this with quite a few games actually. The balance and the difficulty level is, yes. a, is a problem. Because if I play on normal, the AI is really dumb. Like oh, really dumb. That's something. Yeah, I want to. I forgot to put that down on the list. We need to talk about the AI in this game. Yeah. Holy shit, is it bad? Yeah, but if you jump to if you if I jump to hard because I want a little bit of a challenge, it's a it's a it's way too big of a jump. Yeah. <laughs> so there's like so there's a huge balancing issue there because like because right. yeah instead of just making the enemies a little bit hard like a little bit more challenging. They're either like incredibly difficult, or if you play on normal, they're just dumb, and the game is you can walk through the game. 
Right. And there's even some, like, issues with the game itself, like, on any difficulty, just being inconsistent with the difficulty. And one of those things is, was, like, the uh, the overheating thing yeah. in the game. Like, IGN had to do an article that explained how to get around that because the game was so bad about uh, explaining that to you. And that's another thing about the game is it inundates you with so much stuff to read. And, like, oh, God. I, I like that. I love that, like, the, the lore and everything that you could read in that brings the world to life and everything. Yes. You know, I'm a sure game that did that 100% better than this. Which game? Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Mm. With like the world building and everything when it comes to just reading stories and stuff like that, because this so much of the stuff that you're inundated with in this game, it just gets overwhelming. And then you might end up because you get used to skipping everything you yeah. might end up skipping direct, important directions or something. Like how to deal with overheating. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I, when I was doing my first couple missions and I just kept getting hacked and cu- getting having some enemy causing me to overheat. And I had no idea how to deal with it. And I was like, when was this, was this explained to me at some point? And I, repl- and I replayed it. No. God. Like... You said, yeah, just the amount of if just the amount of information it it throws at you and the way they do it, like it's like here we have a like we have a message for you. Here's a mission, and it's like three paragraphs long. I don't want to stop to have to read that. Like I know that sounds lazy, but when when we're just constantly getting these freaking essays thrown at you, constantly. By the way, because you never stop getting phone calls and messages in this game. Right. Ever. And that's gonna bring us. That's gonna bring up something in the, later on in the video. I want to talk about when we get to spoilers, which is just how that just screws up the story at one point in the game yeah. and messes every the ending up for you. But the next thing yeah. I want to talk about though is a lifeless city, and that kind of brings up the AI too. Is just like the city yeah. sucks. Yeah, like I said, like like I play I play the PS5, so the so visually the game looks pretty good for the most part could definitely be better especially when you see what pc has to offer yeah i heard like pc maxed out setting is where it looks best because on what i have like the xbox one and i saw the gameplay video for the ps4 and it it really looks like a 360 era game at some points yeah ps5 benefits from having uh the 60 fps upgrade yeah. Whereas Xbox Series X, you, I believe you have the option to do 60 FPS or or you can play with enhanced visuals at 30 FPS, which I wish PS5 offered that option. But anyway, so, so yeah, the game looks nice. But the only area I noticed that seems like it's lived in is the area right outside of these apartments at the beginning. Right, that whole building. Then, but, that feels alive, yeah, but, but that building. One, yeah, but then once you leave that area and start driving around the city, there's nothing going on. <laughs> right, and it's it has to do with a lot of the missing features, and a lot of the it's just the AI with the the civilians. Because like for one, everything's on a rail. Oh yeah. So if you disrupt this rail, it just stops. It doesn't adapt to you in the world, and you they're supposed to be really big on immersion in this game, and it really takes you out of it. Yeah, the, the all, like all the NPCs are cookie. They're cookie cutter as possible. They like well, we've seen many videos that people have been posting of NPCs reacting in exact sync to explosions. Yeah, they never have anything interesting to say. So yeah, you can't yeah you can't you can't walk up and like strike like a, a game like Skyrim for one. Yeah. Which, like, look, that's the stuff that they sold you on with this game, and that right. that that was my first sign of trouble, honestly, with this game. Is when I would try to walk up to these people and just nothing. It was like, oh, I can't talk to anybody, okay. And then, like the most basic of basic things in an open world game like this, a crime system. <laughs> yeah, it, like I noticed that the police just kind of forget about you once you yeah. do something. It's essential. It's it's essentially non-existent, and when it, and what I actually discovered uh, from other from uh, kind of playing around with the game after I had beaten it was how if you committed a crime, the police just appear behind you. Yeah, out of nowhere. 
Yeah, that like that's how the crime system works. And all you have to do is run around the corner of run around the block real quick and you'll lose them. But they but they won't they, they won't just appear behind you out of nowhere. You could be up you could be up and then in a tower in an apartment. If you commit a crime up there, somehow they're right behind you in the apartment. It's I was, it's just like who designed it this way? Right. And there was supposed to be, there's supposed to be like, that brings us to the missing features too, because there's supposed to be a ton of stuff with the cops. Like, yeah. um, there was supposed to be corrupt police officers that you could bribe and that you, that it affects your, that it really affects like the way you play the game. There's also, uh, there was supposed to be, if you commit a crime, it actually makes an impact in the world and everything with like how people view you, like in Red Dead Redemption. You know, I'm going to be comparing it to that a lot because in Red Dead, if you commit a crime and you become feared, people are af- people are afraid of you because you're a criminal. But there's there's no form of like a reputation system or anything in this game. And a game which story is about becoming a legend in Night City. Yes. Uh, like, yeah, out, outside any story missions or side missions, there's... If you want, if you want, if you enjoy just walking around the city and enjoying the visuals, I mean, good for you. But other than that, the game is lifeless and shallow yeah. <laughs> outside of the outside of the uh, story and side missions. There's there's nothing to do if you're just free roaming. <laughs> right, and it really messes with the immersion of the game too, because you know we we can't in a game that's all in a universe that's a universe yeah. and a genre that is so focused on customization like the cyberpunk genre you don't get to really do that much with your character except for the clothes yeah and like look this game had this game literally has a book like a giant book that i have friends who have bought this book and it's filled with just lore and the, talking about all all the stuff in this game and the amount of detail and, and so it's like well, th- think about the first mission that you do for that you do when you remember when you have to go get that like military weapon that's like a robot dog, <laughs> right? Right. And you encounter and, and you encounter those like pretty crazy looking, uh, like ro- like robotic bugs. Yeah, <laughs> the they're actually eyes. scary. They were intimidating. Yeah, and that's that's like really cool. But that's literally the only time you inter- interact with anybody like that in the whole game. You see them once. Yeah, honestly, you're right because all the rest of the thugs just kind of look generic. That's yeah, it's yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like I I just felt like this game is it's just it's not deep. Right. And the limited customization is another thing that was promised and that is now a missing feature because you're supposed to be like in red like, again Red Dead Redemption. You know, you can make Arthur yeah. Morgan look any way you wanted throughout that game. It was supposed to be like that in this game. There's no salon. Yeah. This is Night City, a city of like fifty thousand people, or, or fifty million. Like I don't know. Yeah, how many can... people? There's no salon to go get your hair do... done or a barber. Yeah, when you can do a million customizations on like powering up your freaking body, you should be able to change your freaking haircut. You should be able to put give yourself a beard. First of all, the biggest like as far as customization goes, the first sign of trouble was when you couldn't. What, what that I noticed was like I can't change my body type. I was just about to say that I noticed that for a game that lets you choose how how big your genitalia is. Yeah, you can't. Like, what if you want your you character to have a dad bod? It's like, yeah, you, yeah, you can't change, you can't adjust weight. Like, 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 if I want to make it a little skinnier, can't do it. Like, right, exactly, because like I wanted the character to look as much like me as possible to make it feel like I was playing the game, and I got a dad bot, and that's what I wanted. Or, yeah, and I did some, I did, I did some research actually about this last week, and like where they were showing what the customization originally looked like when they were demonstrating it, and then. It made me realize just how much they had watered down the customization. It even I, I didn't realize just how bad it was until I looked at even just looking at the interface of what the customization used to look like when you create the character at the beginning beginning of the game. Right. They I don't I don't I don't, I don't know why studios do this. I don't I don't know why we continue to they all of these studios continue to make the same stupid mistake when they have these big games. It's, and this, and this is easily the worst of them all when they knew how bad this game was. There was 
there is no expert there was nothing they can say to make me believe that they did not know exactly what they were doing when they put this game out and there's been a million rumors about who's like who, that they were forced to do it because of add up uh, add, add obligations whatever i'll uh, like, we'll, we'll get to that later because there is like a story behind how this why this game got launched before it was ready yeah for sure yeah um before we go into this talking about the story i just want to say this game needs a third person mode it really does yep it, uh i've seen i've seen people doing like the mods and stuff right. like that to third person uh clearly clearly based on the way they edit, they have your character's animations they did not design this game to be third person right but, but i heard that it exists in the codes of the game that there was supposed to be a third person mode I know for sure there was supposed to be a, the uh, cutscenes were supposed to be in third person. Right. Uh, but which honestly, that would have been enough for me because I like I like the first person. Uh, I like playing the game in first person. I think it's a great way to play it. Right. Um, but yes, the cutscenes. The only cutscene that's in third person is the very last cutscene in the game. So, yes, and. You know, I, I'm kind of like the, the way I play games is that have that option is I like being first person when I'm indoors yeah, to feel more intimate and see all the details inside. But when I'm outside, I like having that third person option. And plus, I just want to look at my character that I made. Uh, yeah, I agree. If it was up to me, like if it was up, completely up to me with how they designed this game in the first place, I would definitely prefer a third person game. That's definitely my style. Like, I, right. like my favorite like my favorite action adventure games like Unch like games that come from naughty dog uncharted third yes. person action adventure games those are my favorite like you said red dead 2 third person and, and you can change it to first person which i love that rockstar does that right and yeah i just there were a lot of moments in the game where the first person really did work well and most of it was with the conversations i really yeah. like that in in first person but I do think that, yeah, it could have been broken up a little bit once in a while with the third person cutscene. But, you know, the interacting with characters and choosing the options, the story options and everything, those were the moments where the first person really shined in the game. For, yeah, for sure. I just don't, I just don't, I just don't understand how, why they had to cancel the third person things. That seems like something that you should have been on top of at this point. Right. <laughs> for some, but. I think it was like over summer this this past, like last year that they announced that they were gonna they, were, they announced that they would eventually have third person cutscenes, but the game will not launch with them. And it's like okay, I looked at that as a pretty minor thing. They didn't think much of it when they announced it, but yeah, it's 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 off putting to never to only see your character a couple times throughout the entire story. Right, and. uh the story okay. is the best part of the game for sure <laughs> it just uh, yeah. the game design itself severely hinders this good story yeah and yeah and, 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 I, it's just it's just it's just frustrating because yeah the story like the story itself is a is a is a very good story it's just a story. It's a story that from clearly doesn't seem like it was meant to just be played straight through. Like this game is clearly designed for you. To, well, the game, they say that's how the game is pitched, mm -hmm. for you to play the play play the story missions, do side missions, explore. This game is supposed to take a long time to complete. Yes. Which which I guess it does if you do the side missions, but I don't know. Like. <laughs> We'll, we're, we'll talk about that because that's where the game kind of shoots itself in the foot for me with the story. Um, I will say this, it, it's very annoying because especially in the beginning of the game when you're in the introduction before you get to the opening credits, which is a very long time, mind you. It's like hours and hours of gameplay before you get to the opening credits. A lot of stuff flies by and you don't really get these characters aren't introduced they just kind of show up and they're just like well you've known them for months so i was like wait a minute months have passed or whatever other yeah. than jackie jackie is one of the best characters of the game and that was really annoying and made it hard to, to take a lot of these characters seriously but it gets better after the credits with that yeah 
and this might this might be a little off topic, but it, it, it impacted my enjoyment of the story. That um, this this is what I found a complete the most inexcusable thing as far as completing the game. The sound design sounded so unfinished throughout the entire story. <laughs> I didn't even notice, it, but yeah, I get. Yeah, actually, in like, some moments, just like, yeah. Like there, there's a like for me. For me, I just I noticed it constantly. Just like it just seemed like there were sound effects missing all the time for things that were happening. And yeah. I'm, and I'm just like, and I I don't know. Like. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm glad you brought that up really because bothered. now that I think about it, yeah, that 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 does affect it a lot. Um, yeah, that really bothered me, especially for for the really cinematic moments in the story and the big climax moments. I was just like, the impact was lacking. For how these decisions are connected to the rest of the story, so I don't know what I don't know what decision I should be making. And that kind of and that kind of goes back to the very beginning of the game when you make your initial decision on what path you want to do. Yeah, even that decision, it really doesn't impact the game. It, it exactly. Impacts, it impacts yeah. Your, I, it impacts your prologue, but that's that, it. That's what I thought. I thought like the whole story would be kind of what I thought that they were going to do was that you play a different side of the story. Like it's the same story. You just played a different side for it. Like you play the corpo yeah. side of the story or you play the street kid or the nomad side of the story. Mm -hmm. And with like maybe a different character in each one. I know that's asking a lot yeah. of the developers, but you know, I, I was kind of disappointed that there wasn't more variations between the stories outside of the prologue. And also, there is some decisions that I made in my playthrough that I felt like that were bad decisions that I yeah. felt like really should have come back and bit me later in the story, and it's never mentioned or brought up again. I think we'll just we'll touch upon the, the controversy real quick, and then we'll give our final thoughts and wrap the review up. Um, yeah, pretty much just... CD Projekt Red, the, the big story is that they sold out to China, which is pretty much like the Chinese corporations are owned, that are all invested heavily in this game are all owned by the Chinese government pretty much. And everyone's kind of mad. It's like, wow, you sold out to China with like all the terrible things they're the government's doing in that country right now. Yeah. Yeah, it sold out. So I'm just like, hey, you guys are kind of assholes for that. Yeah. Uh... Uh, all right, so what should we touch on next? Um, also, that they uh, intentionally did not show gameplay on the oh. Xbox One or the PS4. Yeah. And pretty much yeah, that, that, that false advertising. That is, that, that, that's like EA level of bullshit. As right, I'd expect games. that from a sleazy company like EA, not yeah. CD Projekt Red. Yeah, they're like, they're, like I don't like I don't know if it was the suits upstairs that made him do this, but like just the decision making that they, that went to to getting this game released by December tenth, like you said, not like well, like the amount of misinformation that was put out there, like they were they were they were putting out articles that saying the game runs surprisingly well on current gen consoles, ref, referring to PS4 and Xbox mm -hmm. One, and. Who in their right mind, <laughs> like, agreed to let them put that out that statement, knowing how this game turned out? Right. Because because the game the game has big issues for me on PS5, as far as visual bugs go. Like, I don't I don't even think we ever, we haven't really covered just how awful the game is on base consoles for PS4 and Xbox. Yeah, I got the, the little bit more of the advanced one, so I'm lucky with with that. But even then, it's yeah, still not good. Yeah, if you're playing like a PS4 Slim or a base Xbox One, Xbox One S, me, I, I'm sorry for what you got. Like, yeah. the, like, like the the graphics of the game don't even load in. You got people showing up with no faces. There's no cars not, not, either. Like there's no cars or civilians. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah the, like, and yet we had an article come out. A month prior or so to the game releasing the saying how it runs surprisingly well yeah they just should which is a weird it's a weird headline in general just say it runs surprisingly well it should say surprisingly well considering that's the freaking that's the platform you're releasing the game on <laughs> exactly 
Yeah, you know, and I, um, I surprisingly, you know, I just deleted the, the game. I'm just, I'm gonna come back to it later. And I think that brings Same. us. I think that brings us to our final thoughts. Where I'll let you go first with the final thoughts, and then I'll give mine. And yeah. Um. Uh, it seems like a rather fitting end to 2020. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, just like I said, when the game came out, I had kind of kept my expectations. I brought down my expectations to a more reasonable level because of things I had heard. So I kind of, I took the game at face value for what it was. And at the end of the day, it just, it feels like just like an average, any other game, quite frankly, yeah. it, that it's a game that if you look at, if you look at it on the surface, you, it's a game you think is destined for so much more and has so much to offer. But as soon as you, but once you dive into the game, you're not, you don't find much. And that's just, the sto- like the story is great until the ending until the so-so ending and i don't know like they they keep talking about how they're going to do everything they can to fix this game but for me it's more it's it's not even just about fixing it there's just so much not there and like unless you can actually have a way to completely rehaul this game i don't know what i don't know what i don't really know what you're going to do <laughs> right and you know for me the best way I can describe the the feeling of playing this game, it felt like I was playing an Xbox 360 era game, which is I kept felt like I kept feeling like I was playing Far Cry 3, which is a great game, but it's very obviously a game of that time, and that's how I felt playing this. Which means this game is for all the complaining and everything that we did. I think we could both agree that the game is good. Yeah, I don't regret yeah. playing. It's it. not. It, no, it's not like I said. It's not bad by any stretch. It it's just it, it it's on a level. It, it's just on the same level as a lot of other good games where it should have been way higher. Right, and I think that there's a lot of potential here for I think a DLC that an for sure that, like an epilogue DLC that kind of gives you a little bit of a, a better closure or something would be yeah. a lot of fun. I can see a sequel to this game being really good if they actually learn from yeah. their mistakes. And I can see a lot of the problems with this game being fixed over the next couple of years. And I, I plan on replaying this again when all the glitches and everything are fixed. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm, ho- I'm hoping the glitches are fixed. I'm hoping... Vi- and eventually, eventually, we're going to get a next-gen version of the game for the Series X and the PS5. So hopefully, it delivers more on the visual promises that we really expected. Right. And again, I don't think I really emphasized it enough. I did enjoy playing this game. The game has fun value to it. Right. So, I legit cared about V. I wanted to know what was going to happen. Yes. So I, so I would definitely play this game when the when i had the incentive to again and i look forward to hopefully dlc story expansions because i would love to see more with these characters especially with the somewhat cliffhanger ending that we get right so i uh i would personally say play it eventually wait until everything's updated it's a star wars battlefront 2 situation all over again you know it's it's great now but it was awful at launch and Guys, stop giving these companies money when they do this shit. <laughs> like, just put your like, don't don't let them keep yeah. getting away with this. Like, you know, like, 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 granted, CD Project Red tried to do the right thing and they offer, did offer refunds at the end of the day, but what did you actually it's, there's no excuse for this. Like, I I I just don't understand when you weigh the decisions on whether to delay a game again and have to deal with some outrage fans on the internet, which too much clout is given to the outrage of the internet. Cause people, like, people get over things. I know people, it's ridiculous. Whenever you put, when, you could have delayed this game and people, and it, it, people still would have bought it the second it comes out. Exactly. And Look at Red so, Dead. 
Yes. Red Dead 2. Ah. Yeah, but, but instead you decide to put out an unfinished game to appease the to appease the angry mob or whatever. And this is what you get. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, it's, it's a way worse scenario than just delaying the game. So I don't understand the decision to do it. Right. And uh, I feel bad for Mike Pondsmith, the creator of the cyberpunk uh, uh, universe, because he did the, uh, the the tabletop game and everything. I heard that he was heavily involved with this game and everything. So it, I feel bad that his baby kind of didn't, was a little, ant, was pretty anticlimactic. And yeah. you know, it sucks. We got Keanu Reeves in this game. That's a big deal. Yeah, having, and, having a big movie star in a game. So yeah, and he was excellent in it. He was his character was great. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, the best moments are when you get to play as him. <laughs> exactly, that gun that he carries is just amazing. Yep. So, anyways, guys, that's it. Um, like we said, play it eventually. Just I wouldn't play it now. And uh, anyways, guys, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe, uh, throw a like on the video. If you want to see more content, uh, especially written content, uh, you can go ahead and check out my website. The link will be in the description below. We're going to have a lot more fun videos coming. And uh, Joseph, thanks for being on here with me. It was fun, man. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn.